three dollars. I'll tell you why. Three dollars. Just have a look at this. That's a poppy. And some grass. Anyone hesitate a guess on where I might be? It's two o'clock in the morning. Again. I can't sleep. Probably can't see me now because I'm in the dark. But you can hear me voice. So you can close your eyes to this and think it's a what are those book those live stream book things and you can just, just close your eyes and just listen for a minute. But first of all, open up your eyes to this. Does anyone know who that is? No? Hey Sid. And your donkey? How are you mate? That's Sid and his donkey. Those two helped wounded soldiers off the battlefield. Sid and his donkey. This is my routine when I come to this place. You'll soon see what it is. I have a routine. I like to pay my respects to Sid and his donkey. And I walk along here and I look at this. Look at that. I look at that. I know you can hear me. I look at that. I'm going to try and make this video quick because I only have 26 minutes on my phone. Because I'm on my phone. Right? I use the GoPro. Here it rattles. I'm sorry about that. So this is what I do. I like to walk onto the squares. See? See the squares? See them? Right? Right there. And I like to get exactly in the middle. There we go. We're in the middle. And how do I know that's the middle? Because there's a plaque. There. Right? Turn on the light. There we go. That's how I know it's the room. And I don't stand on it. That's when I know I'm in the middle. Right? You hear that? I turn back and I look at that. And I say thank you. And then what I do is I step to my right so I don't walk any on any plaques. Fuck. Oop, sorry, I swore. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to turn that light off. I don't need the light. Because I don't like to walk on the plaques. And I walk towards the city because that's where it's facing. And then you come to a big plaque in the middle here. All right, and I walk around it like this, and then I come and I stand in the middle. Okay, we will remember them. Yep, see that? See that? All right. I don't like to walk on those things. I walk along here. Then I step to my left. Three steps. And I walk to the eternal flame. I get here. I put my hand in my pocket. Right. Okay, I put my hand in my pocket. And I pull out three dollars see three dollars do you know why I pull out three dollars and I always throw it in with my right hand because that's the hand you shake with that's the hand you greet people with good firm hand strike not overbearing not a test of strength but firm to show your strength as a person to say hello. Why three dollars? Two dollars, right? Two dollars is for me pop. Two dollars. The one dollar is for me pop's mate, who he was closest to on the battlefield. 
to share with, right? Oh, that's for his, that's for him. The other dollar, right? Okay, and like, sorry, I'm talking here. Excuse me. Pay my respects. Now we're going to walk in an angle along there, along there, and I'm going to sit on the steps. I'm going to tell my story because in a place like this, I don't lie. I don't lie anywhere, but here is proof to everybody that I, you were going to get something real. Because it's been something eating me up. But anyway, getting back to three bucks. The three dollars is this. I give my pop two dollars. One dollar is for him. The other dollar is for him to share with someone, right? That way I know he's always got a dollar for himself. The other dollar is for his mate always for his mate right okay and I know my pop and his mate they'll take that other dollar and you know what they'll do they'll break it down and they'll make they will make they'll keep 50 cents for themselves so they can share the other four 50 cent pieces with someone else beside them other people so that way no one's forgotten no one is forgotten and I'm going to tell you, because I get on here and I talk about a lot of stuff, right? And I've, I'm telling you how I got over things and stuff like that. And I bit, get a bit emotional. And that's to be expected because uh, this isn't a channel for, you know, I, might, I do funny skits. Yeah, that's fine, right? And everything. But... Oh, I just uh, you can you, you can make for those people out there and just it's just not for those people I shouldn't say that but for just anyone who's just in a place you're not suffering from mental health you're not suffering PTSD you're just a bit down you don't have mental illness nothing anything like that just to show you tell you that you can get through and I'm going to give you One example, I'll follow this up on a better video because it's been eating me up. A lot of people have noticed it in my videos, my Sturgis videos, that they've seen a, a high and then lulls. Um, I'm not going to mention names and that, but you all know who I went with and who we met, okay? And I just want to express the importance of the word while I'm sitting here on these steps the word staunch do you know the word staunch is actually in the reading of the Anzacs it's there so when I hear people say these wannabe gangsters or just people in general and that they think they're tough guys or not even that, just people who think they're legitimate men to be able to say, I'm staunch, I've got your back. You want to be very careful, mate, because I was brought up around staunch men, okay? And they didn't drink and go to pubs and punch on, right? They didn't abuse women. They didn't look for trouble, but they were prepared for it. And they were also willing to avert any trouble happening, you know? And they were all not, they weren't the heroes, they didn't think themselves were heroes. They just did what was right. And I'm going to tell you this story, right? I've mentioned it in my videos and stuff, but not at length, right? I flew to America on my own. So I left my Mary and I flew to America on my own, right? Okay, to meet up with, I won't say names, three men, okay? We all know who they are, right? Anyway, get there, no worries, everything's good, everything's happy, right? Things took a bit of a turn. Now, let me just explain this. Before I left to go to America, weeks before, I did have the conversation with one of the three, okay? Out of the two that knew, one didn't know. And that was where the surprise was. 
but one of the three I had a conversation with before leaving Australia, before booking any any flights, before doing anything, to go over what was actually going to be expected of me or what was going to be happening, what expenses, the whole lot, okay? I just want to say I'm not a leech, right? But this has been eating me up and this is going to, I'm getting to the story to say you can get through things, right? So things took a bit of a turn. I'll explain all that later. I'm just going to say things took a bit of a turn for the worst. And they didn't need to. Given our age as men, right, given that we, we caught, we've we met each other in this country here first, Australia, and then we kept in contact after they left, right, thanks to a meet and greet through someone else, right, okay, a fourth, another fourth person who met up, we met up with, but I know here, right, and they know here as well, right? Okay, we all should have been able to understand and have a, a better understanding and an appreciation for each other and not acted like children. I don't believe I acted like a child at all, right? Was there some wrongs? Okay, I might have put, made some faux pas, but if you don't give someone direction, right, they are gonna take it as it is. It's a holiday. It's, yes, I you understand you're here for business, you're here to get your product out, you're here to meet and greet, okay? But there's also going to be times when you let your hair down, right? Anyway, getting to that, I, that wasn't explained to me, right? I'm not going to talk about what the drama was at the start. Now, what I'm going to say is I had the biggest meltdown at Rapid City. <laughs> at Michael's place at Rapid City. Right, Michael was a person who put his house up for us rent free for the week that we were there. We didn't have to pay for a thing, okay? Now, I didn't go on the holiday to not pay. I paid, okay, right? And that was being the issue in regards, and it was just, it, it, it got stupid, right? And this is where I'm getting at. You can get through things. I was in a country with not a single person there that I really knew. Oh, well, I thought I knew three, but they weren't there. The issue was with one of them. It turned out it was with all of them because no one came to check me. Two other people, right, David and Ship, right, I didn't even, I don't know them, I don't know them. I've been in that country for a week. I've ridden with them, big deal. But it's amazing the connections you can make with people instantaneously. You can know someone instantaneously on first meeting. We've forgotten that, but you can. You can know a person instantaneously. Anyway, I had a meltdown. It was the day, it was the, it was the night or the, that day that we met a certain person, that night, I had an absolute, complete meltdown. I had one of the three jumping on me. The person that we met, well, didn't really come across as like he was that excited or really you know, genuine that I was there. I felt, this is what I felt, okay? And I've been around. Okay, I've not just walked around the football field. I've walked around a lot of city blocks, up a lot of alleyways. And I've also done a lot of things. I don't tell people this because on the basis that, yeah, I did it hard at school. I was dyslexic and that not saying that's being stupid, but that's just a fair letting you know. I can read, I'm an intelligent man. But someone like myself isn't looked upon as someone who can, oh, how did you do that? Where did you, you didn't grow up there, you grew up there, you know, you judged, you didn't judge us everywhere, right? Let me tell you, some of the best people in the world, look where Superman grew up, he grew up on a farm and he turned out to be a hero. You know, if he told his story, people wouldn't believe him. Look at Clark, that's why he dresses as Clark Kent. Like, what Kent, Clark Kent do? He's nothing, he's an idiot, you know, he can't do nothing, right? Look at Spider-Man, he's a kid, you know, he wouldn't believe he was Spider-Man, right? And stuff. Anyway, I had a complete and utter meltdown. Quietly, very quietly. At Michael's place, we were in a basement bedroom. So there was Shep, myself, and three others. So five people down there. David had a room upstairs. I couldn't go down there. I couldn't, I, slept, I, I jumped in the truck. I went and got a coffee. 
and I was on my own. And I wanted to go home. I, I, I wanted to go home. Just wanted to go home. I didn't want to ruin their trip anymore, or I didn't want to ruin. I just, I just, I wanted to go home. I tried everything, you know. I was on my. I'm not going to say best behaviour. That's bull. Almost. That's not. I'm not an idiot. I don't. I'm not a fool. I'm not. I'm not the the, the king's, you know, joker clown. Okay. I'm me. Okay, I know how to pay respects. I've been in a lot of places where these so-called people, the one that I know here, and the three that we know who don't live here, right? I've been to places that they could, they could only dream of even going and, and, and meeting people that they could, that they're, they're never gonna meet. I did, I did. And I met them not by accident. I was requested to, to look after these people, to meet these people. Okay, I'll let you, so I had a complete nut of meltdown, so I was going to sleep in the truck, that's it, in the driveway of Michael's place, I was going to sleep there, and that was it, I'd already spoken to Mary, Mary and I, we were going through a bit of, we've been, you know, we've been going through some rough things, as relationships do, you know, Oh, am I going to say worse than others? Yeah, it, yeah, it did get bad. There was, and, you know, and I'm not going to say what it was, but let me just clean things up. Mary never cheated on me, and I never cheated on Mary, okay? It wasn't the drugs that got between us. I hit the drugs after what had happened, okay? Let me make that quite clear, okay? So my drug taking happened after what happened, and then what continued to happen coming from everybody else, all right? That was out of my control regardless if I was on drugs or not, I didn't cause it. My drug taking did not fuel any of my issues outside of the garage. My issues, my issues inside the garage. Okay? I'm sick of people looking at people who drink or take drugs and go, oh, you brought it partially on yourself because you, you drink or you take drugs. Not in all cases. But anyway, it was David who came out. He knew this was happening. He could see it on the he could see it on the travel up to Sturgis, and that this divide that was happening between me and three other people. And he came out and he said, "Come inside. You're not sleeping in the truck. I've spoken to Michael. Michael was at work. He's a, he's a trauma nurse, right? Let me just check how long I've gone. Right, I'll clean. I'll hurry this up." He brought me into his bedroom and he said, Justin, he said, I, I want you to stay, I'm enjoying your company and I know you're enjoying it. I want, I personally and Shep personally want you to stay. But if you've made your mind to go up, go home, I can't do anything about that. But I hope you find the strength in yourself to not be a man or anything, to just stay. Because he was enjoying my company and Shep was. And he liked my humour. He liked what he was seeing. He liked how I was polite. If you look at all my videos I put out, I am polite. And I, that is me. It was ingrained in me from my... Oh. It was ingrained in me from my grandfather, my pop, my auntie Pat, my Uncle John, and people I met along the way. And I got through it. And I had the time of my life over there. Not with the three though. With the two and then three being David's wife. And then I met Jason. Sugar Tree Farm. And then I met Thumper who helped Paulie and I who helped me help Paulie when he dropped his bike. Paulie dropped his bike. And we picked it up. I enjoyed the roads. And knowing that what I was doing then was okay by David, I really didn't care what the other three thought because it wasn't their country, it was David's. And I was accepted and I was appreciated. Let me just say, the three that should have been come out, the three that should have helped me, didn't. And that's what hit me the hardest, but I got through it. And you can get through it. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I was in another country in a car that wasn't mine. It was Shay. It was, that was Shay Tree Surgeon's car. Thank you very much, for Shay Tree, for lending us your Ute. 
and letting me drive it, even though, you know, I drove it, David drove it, and that's it, right? You know, but you can get through things. You know, that, that was pretty scary, you know, in, I'm in a country, I'm in Rapid City, it's a small city, there's no international airport, it's small aeroplanes coming in and out, I wanted to go home, I had no way of getting out of there. My meltdown happened at 11 o'clock at night in Rapid City and no one came out bar David and I slept on the couch, in, on Michael's couch and when Michael came home he was quiet and he went to bed. Normally he sits up and he watched TV so I threw everyone's routine out on the upper level out of the routine, right? And I bonded with Michael and great man Michael was and beautiful soul. We spoke, Michael had a divorce and stuff, but I'll get into that. I just wanted to make this video to say, you can get through stuff at your lowest point. I was on my own in another country with no one there. People I barely knew, people I thought I knew that I didn't know at all. And people I barely knew that knew me and I knew them really well. It, it's, it happens. You just got to, you just got to take a breath. Look up and take a breath. Like this. So I'll finish off with my routine because I've got the time. So you just take a breath. And I thank David, Tyler. I think, I think his wife, Sydney Tyler. And I thank Shep and Jason and the people I met. You'll see that. I'm polite. I'm courteous. That's my nature. I care about people. If I say I've got your back, I've got your back. If I say I'm going to be there, I'll be there. If I can help you in any way, don't hesitate to ask. Just let me know what you can, what you want. I mightn't be able to do it, but I might know somebody. Right? And that. So think of people around you that are like yourself me or someone else don't don't be those three don't say your brothers don't say your mates don't say don't don't be an imposter don't use words that carry a lot of weight and a lot of history to them brotherhood staunch mates men i've got your back please i come here to this place at this time of night this is when i mainly come i don't come when it's the fat of the day you know the 11th of the 11th or you know anzac day and stuff like that you know i come on other every other day when you should remember them not on the day that's dedicated to them on the day it's every day you remember and that's how it is with friends and family you don't remember them on their birthday, Christmas, and Easter, and, 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 and things like that, anniversaries and stuff. You remember them every day. Every day. If you've said you love someone, you said you're staunch, you said you're going to have their back, you said this, then back it up. If it wasn't for my strength in Rapid City, I don't know what would have happened. And I wouldn't wish that on another person to go through what I went through in a ute in Shade Trees Surgeon's Ute, parked in a driveway in Rapid City with no one there. And this is what else I do, I pay my respect to this man. Him? He's the driver. And then I come around here, and I pay my respects to this man. He's the wipe, wipers. See that? And then I say, take it easy. See you later. Go get a pie. You can get through stuff. You can. Just take a breath. Alright, see you later.